In this presentation, we will discuss performance evaluation and department classifications. When considering responsibility accounting, we're thinking about the decentralization of an organization, the decentralization giving more control into the regional areas, into the regional or department managers for decision-making processes. As we do that then, in order to be efficient, we want to be able to evaluate the performance. And in order to evaluate the performance, we're going to need to know the classifications or the type of department, the type of unit that we're talking about so that we can set the appropriate standards. So the performance evaluation goals, what's the goals or objectives of evaluating the performance of different segments? We want to be able to control the operations of those sections. We want to be able to appra appraise performance. And you can obviously consider this idea that we have managers that are going to be involved of different departments, different segments within the organization. They're going to be held accountable. And that's going to be one of the major goals, one of the major objectives that's going to allow us hopefully to increase performance by knowing who is responsible for specific goals and specific objectives. In order to do so, we need to outline exactly what those objectives are, what the goals are, what somebody or who has responsibility over what. And then we can use that to appraise the performance of those individuals that are in charge of those specific goals. We can allocate resources. We can look at which departments are doing well, which departments are underperforming and overperforming, and then decide how to allocate our resources based on that information. We can plan a strategy. Once we have this information, once we have the evaluation, we know clearly who's responsible for each goal. Note that as we go through the budgeting process, we're typically going to have a budget. We're going to compare to what actually happened. We're going to have differences. We're going to say, okay, here's some weaknesses that we have. Now, the decentralization of the organization allows us then, if we have set really defined goals, to then go to the specific area that is responsible for the areas that we have problems in or need to improve with. And that's going to help us to plan our strategy uh, as we go through and, and move forward through the process. So we have a similar kind of evaluation process for the performance evaluations, as you would think for any type of evaluative process, including a budgeting process, in which case we're going to say, hey, here is our objective. Here's the goals for the objective. But a key point to that, of course, is Here's your specific objectives. Here's what you have control over as a department manager or, and these are the things that we are going to evaluate you on. We are going to then have an evaluation and base that evaluation on these things. Then we'll run the actual process. Then we can actually have the numbers to make that evaluation, which we will then do. And then we'll go through the, the same kind of evaluation process again. Types of performance centers. Note that as, as we break up the company and have different people in charge of different areas, then some centers are going to differ from other centers. We can't measure, in other words, all segments of the company in the same way because not all companies are gener not all segments of the company are generating revenue. If obviously you are managing a segment of the company that doesn't have revenue generation, it would not be appropriate for us to measure the performance based on the amount of revenue generation. And this seems obvious, but it's kind of a common problem as, as companies grow because you often focus all on revenue generation, which makes sense. But that's not going to be an appropriate measure to measure things like efficiency uh, for types of centers and actions and activities that are not strictly revenue generation type of activities. So we're going to have things like a cost center. A cost center is not going to be revenue generation, right? It's just going to be in charge of costs. You need to have the cost center in order to run the company. And of course, the objective of the cost center is to manage the costs, to be able to deal with the costs in an efficient way. And we need to find and put together appropriate tools, appropriate benchmarks, appropriate measuring tools in order to measure the performance of the cost center. We've got the profit center, which will have a profit component to it as well as costs. So the measurement tools that we'll use for a profit center will include the measurement for the revenue generation. And of course, we're considering the revenue generation over the costs. So they're going to have to control both the revenue generation and the relevant costs that they have control over in order to help to achieve the revenue generation. And then we have investment centers, which could be responsible for making appropriate investments and therefore going to have to manage the costs when we think about the types of performance uh, goals and objectives to have 
and the return on investment for any types of investment decisions have been made. So our goal here in essence is that we have the company, we're gonna break the company up into different types of centers. We're gonna label those centers as cost centers, profit centers, investment centers, then put together appropriate goals to help the measurement of the performance of those centers. Of course, each of the centers will have somebody in charge, some people managing those individual centers, and they will be responsible for these areas and therefore will be able to assign the responsibility of certain outcomes to those centers and be able to measure performance in that way and hold people accountable in that way and of course reward people for doing well and allocate our resources more appropriately.